Hello and welcome. My name is Mary Van Dyke, owner of Finding Grandpa. This series is called Building the Bridge Back to Ireland, using various websites to find documents that might show where in Ireland your ancestors are from and where to look once you get across the pond. This is part six in the series of nine about Irish records, what kind of records you can find in Ireland, as well as what information is in the records. Before we begin, all the websites listed here are samples only. They do not represent everything out on the internet. They are websites that I use often and I flip-flop back and forth between them because they all have different databases. Be aware that some of the free websites I mention might change in the future and have fees attached. Various surnames are used in the examples throughout the slideshow, and I don't want to confuse you if one image shows a record with the name of McDonald, and the very next slide might show a record with the name Kelly or Riley. Now, when we're hunting for Irish records, we want to pay attention to how they call areas. Um, Ireland, the whole island, is divvied up into counties, which is an equivalent to a state in America. Barony and Poor Law Union are equivalent to our county levels. It is how they divvied up the island, the Ireland counties, into different districts. They currently call these registration districts. Parish does not mean a church parish. It means the civil parish. It's an area. And that's equivalent to um, an American city or large towns or metro areas. The townland, was our ultimate goal, is equivalent to an American neighborhood or a small town near one of our cities. DED is District Electoral Division, and that's found in the census records and that actually might be a whole different city name or townland name than you'll find in the uh, registration records. The different records we'll be finding today and talking about is land, census, marriage, birth, death, probate, headstones, and newspapers. When I talk about land, I'm specifically talking about Griffith's valuation found at Ask About Ireland. Between 1847 and 1864, the valuation of the whole island was determined by a group of assessors that went wall to wall across the island to measure it, determine its value, so that they could determine its taxable rate. And in these records, they actually showed the tenant or person living on each lot that they measured. Each piece of farmland was one lot and whoever was living there at the time that the assessors came through, the head of the house, their name is shown in these records. We're going to be discussing Griffith's valuation in great detail in the next part of our series and um, I'll show you how you can find names and uh, the townland names as well because if you don't have them spelled correctly it is difficult to find. Census records can be found. Currently the 1901 and 1911 censuses are fully available online for viewing. Hopefully we'll be seeing the 1921 census soon. The government of Ireland has a law, a hundred year law, where if someone is born a hundred years ago or less, their information cannot be made public. But because of the great issues with lack of records in Ireland genealogy, they might release the 1921 to us sooner than 2021. We can also access remnants of the first four decades of the censuses, 1821 through 1851. The remnants have various counties, and throughout the various years, those can be searched online as well. Marriage records can be found. On the left, I have an index of Mary Sweeney and William Armitage marriage in 1890. 
I found the index for the civil registration and now I've got a film number so I can order that online through the LDS and view it at a local library and or one of the churches near my home. The one on the right is an image of the church marriage, 1863, of Peter Sweeney and Bridget Callanan. Not only does it say their name, as well as the witnesses in this register, but there's something written under Bridget's name in the, le in the right margin. I don't know what it says. I can't read the handwriting very well. All I know is it says something about Lock Ray. The last letter is capital L apostrophe R-E-A. It's all I can recognize. But there are information sometimes found in the margins of the church records. Birth records can be found. This is the same girl. This is my great-grandmother, Bridget Delia Sweeney, born in 1865. On the left is her baptism record from the church. It says she was born on the 29th, baptized on the 31st. And it shows her parents, her mother's maiden name, and her godparents. And most of the time, the godparents, if they were not very close friends, they were siblings or cousins of the parents, possibly even the parents of the parents. So pay attention to godparents that are listed in these records. On the right is the civil registration of Bridget's birth. Shows her father is Bridget Sweet. I'm sorry, Peter Sweeney. They lived on Galway Road. He's a carpenter, and this also shows Bridget Callanan, the maiden name of the mother. And sometimes the person doing the reporting is not mom or dad. It might be someone who is present at birth. So pay attention to that column when you're searching for civil registrations on your family, because that person actually might help link another family to yours. Death records can be found. I've got the civil registration index in the upper left corner, film number. When you order the film, I can get the uh, full page of Peter Sweeney's death in 1896 Lock Ray. There's a snippet of it below in the bottom image. It says he's married, 68 years old, although I believe this is incorrect. I believe he was closer to 65 years old, but this is the only document I have on him showing his age. He is a carpenter. He died of, uh, looks like, bronchitis, among other things. And the person who did the reporting is his son, Thomas Sweeney, son of the deceased, present at death, Athenry Road, Lock Ray. So again, pay attention to who did the reporting when they went to the registrar's office. Probate files can be found if the person left a will. This Peter Sweeney died in September of 1900, but notice on the top line on the far right it says late of County Lock Ray. That means that's where he's living, but he didn't die there. He died in Nakakura. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that properly, and so I've got a specific death date and a location. It mentions his wife as well as how much his estate was worth. Headstones in Ireland are beautiful. I love them. The one on the left says, Erected by, by Annie Moynihan in living memory of her husband, Edward Moynihan, late head constable, RIC. Now that little piece of information is very important because I could look for more information on Edward in the newspapers because he was a constable. He might be mentioned in events where there were arrests, etc. I might also be able to find him in our IC records. The one on the right is simply a sample showing how many family members might be living together. Uh, it shows John Conair, his daughters Ellie, Delia, Mary, his wife Ellen, and his son Martin. It shows their full birth deaths, dates as well. The one in the center is the gold. That's what you're looking for. This is beautiful says, in loving memory of Patrick Cahill, of Claymore, Belinisloe, and I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that properly. But he's buried in the abbey in Loch Ray. So I don't know if Claymore, which is a whole other town miles away, <coughs> excuse me, is a town where he was born, 
or where he is raised, or where he was living at the time of death. But the important thing is, is since I know he is buried in Loch Ray, I now have an option to go to a new townland and research records there. He might have gone to a different church, but is possibly buried in the Loch Ray Abbey with parents or in a family plot. Newspaper clippings can be found on your family. Uh, the one on the left is the obituary of my great-great-grandmother, Bridget Sweeney. This is Bridget Callanan Sweeney. And I stumbled across this on one of the paid newspaper websites that I'll be discussing later. It said that after her funeral in the cathedral, the procession went to the abbey, and that's where she's interred. She's buried in the abbey cemetery. But I have looked at the internment register, and there is no notation of her burial loca of the plot that in the Abbey Cemetery, and there is no headstone. So I don't know where in the cemetery she is. But if it wasn't for this particular newspaper clipping, no one would have known where she was. The next part in our series is Griffith's valuation, where I discuss what it is and how you can move around the maps because it's beautiful it's a great website but it does take a little bit of manipulation thank you for watching